have an overview of the messages exchanged between a station and an access point used to complete an association. They are broken up into four phases, discovery, authentication, association, and four-way handshake. The discovery process consists of probe requests and probe responses between stations and access points. It may also leverage a very important frame called the beacon. The beacon frame will be covered in more detail later on in this module. The authentication process is an exchange of authentication requests and response messages that essentially ensure the station and the access point support the same communication and connection abilities. The association process is also completed through request and response messages and establishes the station as a member of the basic service set. Lastly, there is a four-way handshake that must occur for the client to be fully associated with the AP. This exchange of four frames establishes encryption between the station and the access point. The keys are derived differently depending upon the association authentication being used, which is typically pre-shared key or 8021x extensible authentication protocols. These authentication methods will be discussed in greater detail later. Both passive scanning and active scanning are used to locate a basic service set for connectivity by the client stations. Passive scanning relies solely on beacon frames and active scanning uses probe request and probe response frames. The data included in beacon frames is also found in most probe response frames. Access points can send advertisements to the devices around them informing them of their service set identifier and other information by transmitting a management frame subtype called the beacon frame. Wireless client stations will passively scan and listen to beacon frames being transmitted in their area. Clients will scan all channels and frequencies they support at both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. If they hear beacon frames from more than one access point, they will need to determine which access point has a higher quality signal and commence communicating with that access point. As discussed in the previous slides, beacon frames are transmitted periodically to allow stations to locate and identify a basic service set and to display the basic service set parameters. This frame advertises what is available on that access point. This frame advises stations on how the basic service set operates. Beacon frames include sections containing the following important information. Signal information actually from the radio and not in the frame. Beacon interval used to define the time between beacon frame transmissions. The service set identifier. Supported FIs and data rates. The channel in use country code information for regulatory compliance, robust secure network information element for security parameters, quality basic service set element to indicate whether or not 802.11e quality of service is supported, and if supported, the parameters required for it when used, and vendor specific sections depending upon specific vendor implementations. Clients actively scanning will use probe frames to find access points within a service set. These frames usually include the service set identifiers of the wireless network the client is trying to join. Access points that detect the probe request and are using the service set specified within the probe request will reply with a probe response. The probe response is a unicast message and contains information about the network with which the client is looking to join, such as the MAC address of the responding access point. A probe frame that does not include a service set identifier is called a null probe. These are used to get responses from all APs within the service set area 
regardless of the SSID being used. If an access point is not broadcasting its SSID as part of a beacon frame, many APs will ignore a null probe frame and not respond to such a station. Most 802.11 frames require an acknowledgement. This is an indication of successful delivery. Notification only frames such as beacons or probe requests and responses do not require acknowledgement frames. There are two types of acknowledgement frames in 802.11 networks, acknowledgement frames and block acknowledgement frames. Acknowledgement frames are used when receiving a single frame. Block acknowledgement frames are used when receiving a series of frames requiring a single block acknowledgement to acknowledge multiple frames. However, before a block acknowledgement can be used, the station and access point must agree to its use through a block request block exchange process. Open system authentication always exist even when more complex authentication methods are in use so that the station and the access point can at least create a layer 2 connection to exchange information required by more complex authentication methods. Open system authentication is a simple four frame exchange between the station and the access point prior to the client association process. This process was previously used to exchange wired equivalent privacy or WEP keys. WEP was deprecated in 2004 and should no longer be used. The authentication exchange proceeds as follows. First, an authentication request frame is sent from a client station to the access point. Then an acknowledgement frame is sent from the AP to the client station, followed by an authentication response frame sent from the AP to the client station. Then lastly, an ACK frame or acknowledgement frame is sent from the client station to the AP. Since WEP is no longer used, it cannot cause a station to fail the open system authentication process. If a station does not pass open system authentication, the AP may be rejecting the client due to a maximum client connection or capacity limit configured on the access point or some incompatibility between the access point and the client, such as data rates or modulation used, for example. 802.11 open system authentication is performed prior to either pre-shared key or 802.1x EAP authentication. Other than the previously mentioned reasons of the AP reaching capacity limit or incompatibility between the station and the AP, often the most likely reason a client device cannot make an open association with an access point is due to something wrong with the client drivers. Disconnecting and reconnecting the client adapter or disabling it and re-enabling it on the client station will normally force the driver to reinitialize and can solve many such issues. Once the client passes the open system authentication process, an association request frame will be used to associate to an access point within a basic service set. In order to move the association phase forward, the requesting station must have successfully completed the open system authentication. An association response frame signals the success or failure of the requesting station. Clients can only be associated with one access point radio at a time. To clarify, a station may be open system authenticated to more than one AP, but can only be associated to a single access point. The 802.11i amendment was ratified for security. It has since been rolled up into the 802.11 standard. It specifies the ability to use 802.1x port-based access control and extensible authentication protocol, or EAP, to provide user authentication and dynamic key distribution. This process occurs after the open association process completes. 802.1x restricts a client's access to the network until the station has been fully authenticated by an authentication server, which is usually located on the wired network segment. 
Access to the network is restricted until the authentication is successful. While restricted, the client may only communicate with the authenticator or the AP. Other communications will be blocked. The authentication server is typically a RADIUS or a remote authentication dial-in user service server, which either hosts the user database within itself or communicates with an external user database for authentication of user credentials and profiles. In this process, the supplicant or client device or station wishing to join the basic service set sends EAP messages to the authenticator, which can be the access point or a wireless LAN controller. These EAP messages between the supplicant and the authenticator, the wireless client and the AP, are translated to radius message between the authenticator, the access point, and the authentication server, which is usually a radius server. If the credentials are successfully validated against the user database, the radius server sends a radius access accept message, which is translated to an EAP success frame at the authenticator or AP, and then opens the control port to allow the supplicants, the wireless client's traffic, to traverse the network. The supplicant can then contend for the media and begin passing traffic. At this point, most wireless clients will typically attempt to get an IP address by sending out a DHCP request. While use of 802.1x is common in larger enterprises, typically the infrastructure to support 802.1x authentication is not available in a home or small business. In these cases, a manually configured passphrase is used for client authentication. The station will convert the passphrase into a 256-bit pre-shared key using a standard algorithm. While PSK, or pre-shared key, is more simplistic with fewer required components than 8021x EAP, as shown here, it is potentially less secure, so you want to use a more complex passphrase. If the passphrase is compromised, the security of the wireless segment is compromised. Pre-shared keys can also be used within an enterprise for legacy voice phones that do not support 802.1x authentication with roaming very well. Any authentication issues that result from this simple key exchange with the client station and the AP will be related to incorrectly filling in the shared key on either the client device or the access point. After authentication, either pre-shared key or 802.1x EAP, a four-way handshake must occur. This four-way handshake accomplishes two things. First, this handshake is used to generate the encryption keys to encrypt traffic between the client and the access point. These messages contain numeric information which is randomly generated in each device and would be called the nonce, number used once. The access point starts first by sending its randomly generated nonce, called an A nonce, or authenticator number used once, followed by the client sending its nonce, called the S nonce, or supplicant's number used once. After the exchange of these two messages, both the client and the access point will have the same information and will be able to generate the same unicast encryption key. Secondly, the four-way handshake transmits the group encryption key called the group temporal key from the access point to the client station. Within the third message of the four-way handshake, the groupwise transient key is encrypted using the already generated unicast key and transmitted to the client device. The fourth message the client simply uses to confirm to the access point that the groupwise pair is installed and ready for use. The Ruckus Smart Zone controller provides a utility that allows administrators to monitor all phases of client association. This can be very helpful in troubleshooting scenarios. Notice in this simple output that you can observe the client going through the phases of authentication, association, and the four-way handshake. 
it then confirms the client's ability to access the medium by displaying a DHCP request and a received response. Roaming is when a client station disassociates from one AP and reassociates with another access point that is part of the same extended service set. The goal of roaming is to allow the device to move its association from one AP to another without breaking higher level connections and requiring the device to re-authenticate. Client stations determine when and how or even if they roam. Two amendments were defined to really help facilitate roaming. 802.11k reduces the time it takes to roam by allowing the client to create optimized lists of available APs to assist in determining when and how to roam. 802.11r, referred to as Fast Basic Service Set Transition, or FT, allows all access points in an extended service set to store encryption information for connected clients. This allows clients to associate to another access point in the extended service set without repeating the 802.1x eap authentication process or the four-way handshake. Mm -hmm.